In 1961, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby created the Marvel Comics universe. Or so they thought. 1985 is the tale of a young boy named Toby Goodman and how his love for Marvel characters would go on to impact his life. And no, it hasn't escaped my attention that I did something extremely similar a few months back. Writer Mark Millar, who is probably better known for Marvel comics like Old Man Logan and Civil War, crafts a more nostalgic and, dare I say, optimistic tale than he usually does. In fact, in an interview, Mark states that when he wrote this, he was a kid. And that definitely shows. To show you what I mean by that, let's dive into... Toby is a child of divorce. His dad is a comic book nerd and band member, so naturally he is considered a loser in universe. His mom has married a new man, a rich man, and Toby doesn't like him. Not helped by the fact that his new dad and mom think that he needs to stop being silly and become more serious about school. So yeah, stereotypical setup in place. Time for the creative team to pull the rug from underneath you by revealing the Red Skull in the old Windham house Toby and his dad were visiting. To confirm his suspicions, Toby checks out the house at night, where he sees Dr. Doom and the Mole Man having a heated discussion about a master who has promised them this world, a world without superheroes. Toby tries to run when they nearly discover him, and ends up face to face with the Hulk. Luckily for Toby, the Hulk has Banner's mind during this period, remember 1985, and goes off to fight the Juggernaut who is also inexplicably there. Toby tries to show his dad what happened, but he doesn't believe him. Though Toby is certain he's hiding something and knows more than he's letting on. However, soon things take a turn for the worse. Two people are killed by Electro and Sandman. Modok mind controls a bunch of people into drowning themselves. The Mole Man and his Moloids drag a bunch of people, including kids, into an underground lair. And an elderly couple walk outside their home to see their neighborhood littered with people that were killed by Ultron. Yeah, this situation is dire and continues to escalate as Fin Fang Foom emerges from the port. Toby and his dad are attacked by the lizard but manage to escape to an area cordoned off by the military. Toby's dad goes back to save his ex-wife who hadn't left her house and Toby decides to check out the old Wyndham house thinking that if the villains were emerging from there, it was possible that there was a way into the Marvel Universe, where he might also get help. He is chased by the trapster, but manages to enter the portal, into the world outside his window. Luckily, trapster is hit by a car and loses him, allowing Toby to go looking for help. He strikes out with the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, but enters the Daily Bugle in search of Spider-Man. Thanks to his innate knowledge of the Marvel Universe and Peter Parker's history, he manages to convince him to help. Meanwhile, in the real world, Toby's dad manages to get Toby's mom and the two escape. Unfortunately, the situation appears to have reached its nadir, as Galactus has arrived, and he's hungry. The two of them are attacked by a bunch of villains and are about to be finished off until a familiar vibranium shield slices through one of Ock's arms, knocks out the Mandarin and returns to its wielder. The heroes are here and in a wonderful homage to the original Secret Wars, the spread page features all the heroes who took part in the event. Well, most of them. Avengers, assemble!
Sorry, Cap. I couldn't resist. As the heroes begin wiping the floor with the villains, I mean, the Silver Surfer is with them, Toby's dad takes them to the mental institution where Clyde Wyndham is. Clyde, as it turns out, was the first mutant to be born on this world. The comic actually tries to trick readers into thinking it might be Toby's dad for a bit. And he has some serious powers, like bringing back his deceased dad back to life as a zombie and hypnotizing the entire town back when he was a kid type of powers. His mother was scared of him and ended up knocking him out and causing permanent brain damage. After her death, when he was transferred over to the hospital, the nurses sold his comics inadvertently kicking off this rampage. Unfortunately, the Red Skull was with him and shoots Jerry, causing Clyde to snap out of it and send all the villains home. The heroes also take Clyde with them and, at Toby's request, his father as well. Our story ends with the reveal that Toby was the narrator this entire time. As an adult, Toby has become a comic book writer at Marvel and is telling his story as a comic book strip and brings his dad back to life in the Marvel Universe on the final page. Compared to Old Man Logan and Civil War, 1985 didn't make much of a splash to the point where I'm not even sure many of you have even heard of it. It's even set to take place in the same universe as Kick-Ass and Jupiter's Legacy, so it's kind of caught in the middle of the Marvel Universe and the Middlerverse. However, this doesn't diminish its impact. It's meant to be a small town affair and to show what would happen if Marvel's supervillains attacked said small town. The answer? Unimaginable carnage. Artist Tommy Lee Edwards makes seemingly goofy villains like Stiltman and Modoc appear extremely deadly, and when actually scary guys like Ultron and Fin Fang Foom appear, the terror ratchets up. Seeing how deadly some of these characters actually could be in a world without heroes to stop them is extremely chilling. Except for Frogman, who gets killed by the police, proving that, no matter the world, Frogman remains hopelessly ineffective. And yes, if you think these villains are acting a bit out of character and normally wouldn't be so deadly, I don't think the Blob has actually eaten people in the main Marvel Universe, Mark. You have the excuse of Clyde controlling them. Though how much control he has over them and how much they just fear his power is up for debate. Artist Tommy Lee Edwards also plays with the look of the book. When in the real world, everything has a more gritty tone, but the Marvel Universe is more bright and kind of artificial, but it works. It indicates how hopeful it is while also reminding us that it's not technically real. Mark Millar stated that he wrote this comic when he was around 11, and I can see that. There's a childlike sense of wonder while reading it as Toby interacts with these larger-than-life superheroes. And there's definitely more than a little bit of wish fulfillment as well, after all, which kid wouldn't dream of standing next to the Marvel Pantheon and going, Avengers Assemble! As the story's name and other things have hinted at, 1985 is a homage to Marvel's Secret Wars, with issue 10 of the epic story having come out in Toby's world and the Secret Wars event having apparently just wrapped up in the Marvel Universe, as indicated by Spidey's iconic black costume. I wish there were more done with it, maybe just using the characters who participated in the original event or something similar, but I can't really complain, as it is, in essence, a secret war, taking place in a small town that gets quietly covered up, with Clyde Wyndham 
essentially acting as the Beyonder. So, uh, show this comic some love. Maybe check it out for yourself. If you're interested in getting a physical copy, there's a link in the comics down below. So, maybe check it out.